Hi everybody and welcome back to December 3, Story 3. I just have a short little story for you today, but it's a neat little story about the true meaning of Christmas and I hope it gives you some inspiration for this holiday season. It's just called a Christmas story, so I don't know if it has another name, but um, that's what it's called. So, we will start now. It's just a small white envelope stuck among the branches of our Christmas tree. No name, no identification, no inscription. It has peeked through the branches of our tree for the past 10 years or so. It all began because my husband Mike hated Christmas. Oh, not the true meaning of Christmas, but the commercial aspects of it. Overspending, the frantic running around at the last minute to get a tie for Uncle Harry, and the dusting powder for Grandma. The gifts given in desperation because you couldn't think of anything else. Knowing he felt this way, I decided one year to bypass the usual shirts, sweaters, ties, and so forth. I reached for something special, just for Mike. The inspiration came in an unusual way. Our son Kevin, who was 12 that year, was wrestling in the junior level at the school that he attended, and shortly before Christmas there was a non-league match against a team sponsored by an inner city church, mostly black. These youngsters dressed in sneakers so ragged that shoestrings seemed to be the only thing holding them together presented a sharp contrast to our boys in their spiffy blue and gold uniforms and sparkling new wrestling shoes. As the match began, I was alarmed to see that the other team was wrestling without headgear, a kind of light helmet designed to protect a wrestler's ears. It was a luxury the ragtag team obviously could not afford. Well, we ended, ended up walloping them. We took every weight class, and as each of their boys got up from the mat, he swaggered around in his tatters with false, false bravado, a kind of street pride that couldn't acknowledge defeat. Mike, seated beside me, shook his head sadly. <clears throat> I wish just one of them could have won, he said. They have a lot of potential, but losing like this could take the heart right out of them. Mike loved kids, all kids, and he knew them, having coached Little League baseball, football, and lacrosse. That's when the idea for his present came. That afternoon, I went to a local sporting goods store and bought an assortment of wrestling headgear and shoes and sent them anonymously to an inner city church. To the inner city church. On Christmas Eve, I placed the envelope on the tree, the note inside telling Mike what I had done and that this was his gift from me. His smile was the brightest thing about Christmas that year and in succeeding years. For each Christmas, I followed the tradition, one year sending a group of mentally handicapped youngsters to a hockey game, another year a check to a pair of elderly brothers whose home had burned to the ground the week before Christmas, and on and on. The envelope became the highlight of our Christmas. It was always the last thing opened on Christmas morning and our children, ignoring their new toys, would stand with wide-eyed anticipation as their dad lifted the envelope from the tree to reveal its contents. As the children grew, the toys gave way to more practical gifts, but the envelope never lost its allure. The story doesn't end there. You see, we lost Mike last year due to dreaded cancer. When Christmas rolled around, I was still so wrapped in grief that I barely got the tree up but Christmas Eve found me placing an envelope on the tree, and in the morning it was joined by three more. Each of our children, unbeknownst to the others, had placed an envelope on the tree for their dad. The tradition has grown, and someday will expand even further with our grandchildren, standing around the tree with wide-eyed anticipation, watching as their fathers take down the envelope. Mike's spirit, like the Christmas spirit, will always be with us. May we always remember each other and the real reason for the season and his true spirit this year and always. I just love that story because I love acts of kindness. I love doing things for others. And so if there's someone this year you're not sure what to get or they're not really into the regular Christmas gifts, think about what you can do to serve others. Think about a gift you can give in their name for someone else. 
Anyways, I hope that inspires you, and I hope um, that you have a blessed evening. I can't wait to read tomorrow's story. It's called There's a Song in the Air. I just read it this afternoon, and it is a good one, just like all the rest will be. So I will see you tomorrow.